91.3 WYEP. We are live and direct today with Kaiser Chiefs. The new album, Education, 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 and War is out now. And guys, the album really sounds great. What's the meaning behind Education, 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 and War? Because it's a very powerful title. Right. Okay. Big question. Going in strong there with the questions. I'm sorry to do it to you. Um, okay. Well, um, it was a, a kind of a tough year for us. Um, last year 2013 because one the guy we started the band with Nick he left and uh, not many people thought we had it in us to carry on without him so we were in a position of jeopardy but uh, I think that that's a position we quite we quite enjoy we don't enjoy it at the time but it's more rewarding and we had a real tough year of um, learning how to be a band again learning how to write songs together without him in the room and, and also fighting our way out of a situation that we didn't really want to be in which was having that jeopardy of it being taken away from us. So the year was about education and war, and it, those two themes kept cropping up. And then there was a song on the record called Cannons that you said education, education, and war, which was kind of a, a Mickey take. Is that, does that translate? Um, a Mickey take. A Mickey take, like uh, taking the... I can't say that either. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, of, yeah. a, of, a, of a speech Tony Blair made in, uh, in, in, in 97 or something where he said his main policies were... Education, education, and education. But really, it seemed to be about war. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, it was a, a Mickey take of that. I'm going to, yeah, Mickey take. I'm going to start using that if you're okay with that. I can, yeah, I've got hundreds of them. Okay. <laughs> so, would you say this is a political record? Ooh, uh, it's tricky that because I don't think we're a political band. But to be, uh, to, but then if you're into rock and roll, it's, it's, it's all about an unease with the authority, which I suppose is makes it kind of political. So yeah, we are we have that unease, but that's all people that pick up guitars do, I, I feel, in a small way. All right, big question number two. I was, no, that was number two. This no, is no, no, three. this is number two. That, that okay. Was, okay. Do you think music can change the world? Uh, it's changed mine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, this, as you said, is your first album without Nick, who was a founding member. He was a former drummer. How has the creative process in Kaiser Chiefs changed? Well, ah, oh, it's a good big question. Big question. Oh, All yeah. the questions. It's, it's, early. it's like news night. We flew in last night, so we're still. <laughs> okay. uh, I'll have a good answer tomorrow. Well, actually, it's more like it, well, it's more like it was right at the beginning because when we started writing this record, we just got into a room and made loud noises until we liked the loud noises. I think that's the best way to do it. And uh, for a long time, I think we probably overthought it, but now we. Um, We've gone back to underthinking it. You overthink it later, but at the beginning, it should be about just making noises as a bunch of mates in a room. So as you're waiting for this record to come out, what's the... What's I mean, the noises on instruments, not just making noises. <laughs> <laughs> just wailing. <laughs> Can't it be both? Sorry, what, question four. Question four. What was the, the thinking in the group as you're waiting for this album to come out. And I should say that it did hit number one. I don't think here in America, but back home for you, it certainly did. It didn't hit number one in America. What? Not yet, but what? after today, after if, to you, all right, look, okay. if you do if you do this right. As long right, as that's a promise. <laughs> yeah, it did hit number one, yeah. yeah. So did you have any ex expectations for it to do that well? Uh, I think the expectations grew as we made it. I think when we sort of started last January, we were... Just us, uh, us four without VJ even. We're just four guys, you know what I mean? We had no songs and sort of no band. Uh, so expectations were sort of low. <laughs> <laughs> then we got VJ and that raised expectations a little bit. And then uh, we wrote some songs and then by the time we came and recorded actually in Atlanta in America and uh, went home and we had this great record. And I think from then onwards we were sort of, it was growing and growing and growing, you know? So we, think, we thought we thought maybe we'd get to top five or something. And then uh, Ricky did some... Uh, Good work on TV in, right. in, in England. And uh, then it was number one, and we were all very pleased. Okay. But the thing is about ambitions is they're, they're kind of annoying things because you never reach them because they always get bigger. And even though we got to number one, which six months before we would have thought was unthought of, then we were like, well, we could have two weeks at number one now. Yeah. <laughs> and why aren't we number so, one in America? Yeah, why, yeah and then, so, so ambitions grow. Well, they're, they're always out of reach, which is possibly a good thing because then you'll never be happy. I get that. <laughs> I, I know what you mean there. <laughs> Content. No, that's not even good. You, you know what I mean? You'll never. You'll always be striving. Always stressing yourself, yeah. which is the best. 